right, I've got a little bit of Jerry Harrison playing in the background uh, from the Casual Gods album. I uh, love this uh, music, uh, Jerry Harrison from uh, Talking Heads, of course. So, um, yeah, playing a bit of different music today. Uh, we're on to day 17 of our lockdown diaries. So uh, welcome, and today we're going to talk a little bit about room acoustics. I'm going to pop a couple of pictures uh, up of the room acoustics of this room and uh, how we went about uh, figuring out what the room notes were with uh, measurements of the room. Uh, using a calibrated microphone and some software, we were able to get some responses and see peaks and troughs were and in rooms you have basically if you think of the sea and waves you, your sound waves are like that but they're a bit different to the sea they're in three dimensions uh, so you've got the waves that are going between the floor and the ceiling so you've got vertical waves so these are sound waves going like that then you've got ones going across the room, so they're going like that, and then you have others that are going down the room. So you've got these three lots of waves that can get a bit choppy at times. And uh, so in most rooms uh, that are smaller, you will have uh, these waves that will be reflecting back off those walls and the ceiling uh, and muddying up the sound at quite uh, low frequencies, usually the problems occur in that range of sort of 50 to 250 hertz or maybe a little higher, depending on how small the room is. Uh, and as you get to a bigger room, those frequencies uh, will become less problematic in most rooms, but the frequencies will drop because the uh, dimensions are longer. So in this room, we've got some uh, various standing waves or nodes, uh, which are pretty minor and very s small level. But we've made some bass traps, they're homemade ones and I'll show you how you can make them and how you can calculate uh, what they, size they have to be and uh, where to put them. So I'll just change camera angles and we'll go into that. So in the corner here you can see the biggest uh, bass trap that we have and uh, it goes from the top of the bench there up to very close to the ceiling. Uh, that is designed to trap a particular frequency. I'll show you what that is shortly. And then on the in the other corner, we have a smaller one that is designed to trap a different frequency. And then over in the front corners, we have some others in the corner there and over in the corner behind the subwoofer there. So we've got one in each corner and you can see they're all different sizes, that's quite a short one. One in the corner there is a much bigger one. And uh, I'll show you what the frequencies are that those are designed to trap. So the uh, large one there is uh, designed to trap 36 Hertz. Now if you run a calculator to see how long the waveform is for 36 hertz, you'll find that it's 9.5555 meters long. So in most rooms you're going to be not developing that full waveform before it hits a wall. In this room, uh, which is 10.4 meters long, we do fully develop 36 hertz cleanly. So we found when we did a plot that we have these four uh, peaks in the response in the base. We have one at 36 hertz, one at 70, one at 80 and one at 112. Now these would be combinations of length and height and width um, because they become multiples of those dimensions. So to create a quarter wave trap you obviously divide that dimension of the waveform by a quarter and so your base trap in the corner there becomes 2.388 meters long that's a quarter of the wavelength of 9.55 the 70 hertz one that's over in that corner 
is uh, 70 hertz is 4.4142 meters, so a quarter wavelength is 1.228. And how we go about making these is we bought some uh, tubing which is made out of cardboard and is designed for pouring concrete pillars and they use it as a former and pour the concrete in and cut off the cardboard tube. So what we did was we cut some caps to go on the ends, we filled it up with uh, damping material which is Dacron, uh, similar material to what they use inside sleeping bags and uh, puffer jackets and so forth. And then we uh, covered the tubes with some felty sort of material. I'll go up and give you a closer look to this at this one. It's uh, a product made by uh, Ortex, and um, it's a sort of a, a fluffy type of uh, material. It doesn't really matter what you coat them in. The idea is that the base waves are going through the cardboard, getting absorbed by the Dacron inside, and uh, because it's tubular, it's going to basically allow those sound waves to bounce around infinitely inside the tube until they get uh, trapped or killed. So that's the principle. Now to find out what your standing waves are, there are some uh, very good programs uh, that you can get online. Uh, I use one called REW. Um, have a look in the App Store and you'll find there'll be one for your Android device or your iOS device. You will need a calibrated microphone, but they're not that expensive. If you're an audiophile and you're really keen on getting into acoustics, you, know, you can buy one of those for maybe somewhere around $80 to $100 US, um, locally a couple of hundred bucks, and you'll be set. Uh, and then you can run some plots on your iPad or your phone or your laptop and see exactly where those standing waves are in your room. Once you know where they are, then you can start to address them. So if you don't have the data to actually know what you're dealing with, sure, I can hear a lot of these things from 40 years of experience and say, well, that's um, possibly coming from here or there, but uh, that's not much help to you if you're um, at the other side of the world or the other end of the country. So getting some tools um, to see where your issues lie and then addressing them. Uh, in this room, we didn't have very many problems at all. Just a couple of little lumps uh, and bumps in the base response, which we cleaned up with these tube traps because we'd spent the time to make sure that everything uh, in the construction of the room was helping to balance out the acoustics. So you want a balance between hard and soft, absorptive, reflective, so forth. So there's, there's a balancing act going on. Um, we got away with it by spending an awful lot of time and money on the room. Not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to build a room and so they will have to address the problems by some other means, fixing up the room that you've got. And uh, positioning your speakers so that they don't excite the room resonances is a, a big plus. So we'll go into a few other tips tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a listen to Jerry Harrison.
So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, the session today. Subscribe and share this around as much as you like. And if you've got any uh, requests for other topics to cover, just pop them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to look at that in a future issue. Thank you for watching.